Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Sai Gaunkar. Let's continue our discussion of NCRT Science series. You already know we have reached NCRT Science for class 8 and we are doing a chapter by chapter discussion. I hope you remember what we discussed in our previous interaction. We spoke about sound, chapter 13. We understood what is the definition of sound, how does sound propagate, what kind of a wave is a sound wave, characteristics of sound wave were also discussed. Today, let's move on to the next chapter. Today's agenda is chapter 14, that is chemical effects of electric current. Now, in our previous interactions, when I say previous interactions uh, during the NCRT 6th discussion, 7th discussion, those video lectures are already available in bilingual format on the channel Study IQ IAS. Now, in those interactions, we have already built up our base regarding what is electric current. We discussed what is electrostatic force, what is the meaning of electric current. Electric current is moving of charges from one place to another place. We discussed about properties of conductors, properties of insulators. So, we have basic idea. We also discussed creating a tester, creating a test circuit. All these things were discussed. So, based on that foundation itself, we are going to understand chemical effects of electric current. So, here we are going to understand what is the meaning of electrolysis, what are the advantages of electrolysis, what is the meaning of electroplating, what is reduction, what is oxidation from the perspective of electrodes, all these things would be discussed. So, let us begin our interaction. I hope you have already enrolled for this program. If you have not, then you still have an opportunity because 25th May, the classes are starting 6 p.m. Just the initial orientation class is over, but you still have the opportunity, a couple of hours to enroll for this particular program. Why should you do it? Because this is the most comprehensive program for UPSC Civil Services Preparation where we will be hand holding you from prelims till your interview. There is already one to one mentorship, there is group mentorship, there is current, there is current affairs program, there is main sensor writing program, there is uh, prelims test series, everything included for 29999. If you want heaviest discounts, do use my code Rahul Live on the app or on the website. Do not forget, I will see you very very soon in the class. Right. Let us talk about electric current and its chemical effects. As I told you, in our previous interactions, we have already understood that we should not touch a live wire. If there is an electri electrical appliance, do not touch the live wire because you can also, you can also transmit electricity through you because I told you human body has blood. Human body is also a decent enough conductor. If there is earthing available, then you will also become a part of circuit and the electric current will flow through you. You will experience a shock. Right? In our previous interactions, we have also created some testers. We have created test circuits, etc. So, what is electric supply? What is electric current? What are electric cells and batteries? We have already discussed. Today, we are going to understand a little more about that. In our previous interactions, we categorized the materials into two broad groups. We said some are electrical conductors, some are insulators, right? We said silver, gold, copper, the, the metals basically, metals, seawater. I, so I said even humans are decent enough conductors. We discussed that, right? That means they allow electric current to pass through them. They allow electric charges to pass through them without much resistance. That means the resistance would be a little low. But there are certain insulators also, for example, rubber, glass, oil, wood, etc., diamond. These are insulators. They do not allow electric charges or electric current to pass through them. But now imagine, now these are, these are easy to understand. Means they allow the electric current to pass through them. Now imagine, imagine there is a piece of wood. Now it's written dry wood here. Imagine what I do is I pour water on this particular wooden material. And then I connect it to a circuit. Do you think electric current will flow through that or not? You would say, sir, probably yes. That is why in this chapter, the basic idea is I cannot say something is a perfect conductor or a perfect insulator. This chapter basically says that it is better to distinguish materials into good conductors and bad conductors of electric current. Many a times the insulators, insulators, if if uh, they are connected to moisture, if or if there is some sort of a liquid, 
which is poured on them, they might act as conductor because liquid helps to conduct that electric current. That's why it says it's better to call good conductors and bad conductors rather than conductors and insulators. So, agenda of this chapter is basically to understand do liquids conduct electricity? As I told you, we have already created testers like this, right? We have created a circuit where there is a battery or a cell, there are wires which are connected to it. Now, here there is there is a screwdriver or a tester, whatever you say. Wire is connected to the metallic part and the light is on, which means this metallic part is the good conductor of electric current. I understood that. Now, I have simply changed the location of the connecting wires. What I have done is now I have connected the wires to the insulator part. Say this is a plastic handle. So, plastic is a bad conductor of electricity. Of course, the light here is off, poor conductor. But now imagine I simply pour a liquid on this. What would be your guess? Will this light be on or off? There is a very high probability that it would be on because many liquids they do they do transmit electric charges that's why if i create a, a create a circuit like this where you see there is a battery yes there is a battery there is a bulb which is connected and the leads of wire here instead of this metallic part or plastic part i directly insert these leads into water what do you think is going to happen to this is this bulb will it be on or will it be off Many of you will say, yes, probably it will be on. But it depends on the liquid. As I told you, there are liquids which do not, do not transmit or do not transfer electric charges. There are strong conductors which are liquids also. Generally, water, if it contains dissolved salts, then it becomes a very good conductor of electricity. Whereas pure water or distilled water, it is a bad conductor of electricity. Here are some of the examples. Say, if I, if this particular liquid, if this is a water where there are dissolved salts, salt compounds, it becomes a good conductor. If I replace that water by lemon juice, that also becomes a good conductor. If I replace that water by vinegar, it becomes a bad conductor. If I, if I put honey there, it becomes a bad conductor. It is not going to transfer those electric charges. If again, I use mercury, mercury is a metal, liquid metal, it's a good conductor. If I use pure water, distilled water in which there are no dissolved salts, that is actually bad conductor. So, please remember this particular aspect. When I say, when I say that electric current when it passes through liquid, if it passes through pure water, pure water is a bad conductor, distilled water is a bad conductor, but normal water that we use, there are a lot of salts which are mixed in it, it is a good conductor of electricity. And this was proved by one of the British chemists, William Nicholson in uh, in 1800s, William Nicholson, he did an experiment. What we just saw, what he did was, he immersed two electrodes in water and current was passed through it. Now, what he saw, there were bubbles. There were bubbles. And he came to a conclusion that there were bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen that were produced when electric current is passed through that water. That means, if electric current is passed through a liquid, there is some sort of a chemical reaction that is taking place. That means some chemical reaction occurs because of which gas bubbles are seen towards the electrode sites. Somewhere oxygen is released, somewhere chemical is released, some sort of chemical reaction takes place. There may be a change in color of the electrolyte or the liquid. There may be change in color or some sort of a deposition that can be seen on electrodes. So, something is happening. That means electric current can enhance or can reduce the amount of chemical reactions that take place, meaning electric currents have effect on chemical reactions. Now, the response can be studied here by using different solutions and different electrodes. That is what we are going to do. As I told you, as I told you, if I take distilled waters, if I take distilled water, that would be a bad conductor. But water that we use normally, if I if I take out water from the well, if I take out water from the bore well, it is basically underground water or even river water. Those waters are mixed with mineral salts naturally. So any water taken from hand pump, tap, wells or ponds, it has some dissolved salts in it. So it becomes a good conductor of electricity because there are there are that is basically in ionic forms. There are free salts which are able to conduct electric current. That is why Paheli is giving you an advice here. 
she says small amount of mineral salts present naturally in water are beneficial for human health very good that's why we say it's called tds right we say tds total dissolved salt content if you have a ro at home that ro guy will come and he'll tell you your tds is somewhere around 80 which is good for your health tds should not be very high it should it should not be 200 300 400 because dissolved salts can create problems for you that's why a filter guy will tell you a tds of somewhere around 80 to 100 is very decent because it will give you necessary necessary mineral salts which are which are required for your body but because of the same mineral salts water becomes a good conductor and that is why she tells you never ever touch electrical appliances when they are on or never ever touch electrical appliances with wet hands or with wet floor because you will become a part of that circuit and electric current will move through you that means you will get a shock sure meaning electric current it, it electric current in a in a liquid it leads to some sort of chemical reaction or it allows the electric current or the charges to flow and this electric current it depends on the ions the more the dissolved salts in it the more electric current is transferred higher the ions higher the conductivity of that particular liquid all right so we understood the phenomenon meaning liquids can also be good conductors of electricity depending on the amount of ions that are present in that liquid using this particular principle we have devised or we have developed a process called as electrolysis electrolysis now electrolysis is basically a process where you give certain charge towards the electrodes and these electrodes are dipped in a solution and this solution is called as electrolyte electrolyte all right so elect electrolysis is a process of breaking down a ionic mixture into their compounds by passing electric current so electric current leads to some sort of a chemical action where the ions or the charges are transferred from one end to another end because there are two electrodes now there is a cathode and there is anode remember whenever electric current is passed for electrolysis or through a process of electrolysis the anions they travel they travel through the electric circuits and arrive at the cathode so electrolysis is basically a synchronous process where certain chemical reactions happen that means there is transfer of electrons from one side to another side and oxidation happens at the cathode and reduction happens at anode so remember cr cristiano ronaldo that means cathode undergoes reduction ao anode australian open that means anode oxidation happens at anode oxidation means means loss of electrons so at the anode there is loss of electrons and at the cathode there is gain of electrode gain of electrons so remember cathode undergoes reduction anode undergoes oxidation it has nothing to do with oxygen please remember that i am talking about oxidation and reduction in electrolysis oxidation is a process which occurs at anode which is characterized by loss of electrons and the gain of electrons happens at cathode which is called as a reduction process so some sort of chemical reaction happens that's called as electrolysis now this is the same principle that we use in our cells you must have a battery at your home you must have a battery at your home right the same process happens there is electrolyte there are two electrodes charges move from one end to another end you again charge it a reverse process happens all right right now based on this electrolysis we have developed a process called a process called electroplating by name itself you know electroplating now this is a process where we get a desired coating on one of the electrodes this process is called electroplating process means whenever i use two electrodes what is going to happen through this solution called as electrolyte there would be reduction from one side there would be material loss from one side and there would be material gain on the other side or the other electrode you can see here an example a simple circuit showing electroplating where we are using two copper plates and copper sulfate solution when the electric current is passed then the copper sulfate solution it dissociate dissociate that means copper ions and sulfate ions are formed and the free copper it gets drawn towards the electrode connected to negative terminal towards the negative terminal the 
copper is deposited. So what do we do? We simply change the electrolytes. We simply change the electrodes also. Instead of a copper, if we use a carbon electrode, then I can get a copper deposition on it. So I can play around with the electrolyte and the electrodes, electrodes to get whatever desired plating I want on one of the electrode. This process is called electroplating and we use it extensively to, to create materials that we see every day, right? Every day. So for example, I have a chair here and the chair has a steel or a, or a frame, a metallic frame and that metallic frame is quite shiny. How is it prepared? How is it created? Is it painted? I don't think it's painted. It's very fine. It's very fine. It is electroplated. How does it happen? Electroplating is a very common and a very useful process that we use. We use a lot of materials. You must have seen shiny articles like this. See, there is a car bumper which is shining. The rim of the vehicle, it is shining. There are shiny utensils. The, the cycle handle, you must have seen. It's electroplated. Electroplated with a nickel, electroplated with chromium. Chromium is one of the examples. Chromium plating is done on many objects which we use in our day-to-day -day lives. In kitchen, say bicycle, say vehicle, etc. Chromium is one of the metals which gives shiny appearance to the alloy or the electrode on which we plate it. It does not corrode. That means it does not undergo corrosion. It resists scratches. But many a times, since chromium itself is expensive, it may not be very economical for us. So what we do, we go for production of stainless steel. Instead of coating with chromium, we produce stainless steel where chromium is already added to the to the iron along with chromium. There is a uh, there is carbon, there is molybdenum, vanadium, all the other things are added to create high grade stainless steel. Apart from chromium, we have seen so many other equipments. You must have seen many times you can understand if a person is wearing a jewelry. Is that real gold or is it some sort of other metal which has been coated with gold? It's also called roll gold. So electroplating is also done, done where silver or gold is electroplated on other inexpensive metals so that the entire equipment can become less expensive. In our day-to-day -day lives, we also use tin cans to store food. Now, these tin cans are basically made up of iron, basically made up of steel, right, iron. So, what do we do? We coat tin over it. How do we coat it? We use electroplating. So, tin is electroplated, meaning this tin can is made one of the electrodes. There is another electrode on the other side. Both of them are dipped in an electrolyte. Electric current is passed. Then, tin is electroplated on this can. So, tin is non-reactive. Tin helps in in storing food so food does not get spoiled by packing it in tin cans we also have a process of electroplating zinc on iron right again electroplating can be done or there is also other process this is also called galvanization but do remember so do we always electroplate no there is no need of electroplating itself it's one of the common methods that we use there are other processes of plating also there is electroless plating, there is direct spraying, plasma spraying, plasma spraying of these metals on other, uh, other stuff, right? So, such things can be done or there is direct immersion also, immersion process, such kind of process can also be used for plating on an equipment. But since we are talking about chemical effects of electric current, electroplating makes a lot of sense, right? And we see a lot of industry industry industrial applications for this in many industries such equipments are produced but there is one particular problem i told you in electrolysis what do we do we have two electrodes on one side there is electrode one and on the other side there is electrode two and these electrodes are immersed in an electrolyte now once the reaction is done that means what what i wanted was i wanted the ions from this particular electrolyte or say this electrode to be electroplated on the other electrode the process is done what do I do with this electrolyte? That's the question. And this disposal of disposal of waste or disposal of electrolyte which has been used from electroplating factory is one of the major, major factor for pollution. And that is why we need certain guidelines or regulations to protect the environment from such industries. The electrolytes or the waste material or the residue products, the byproducts, they have to be disposed of carefully without harming the environment. That is very, very 
imperative. Of course, we create a lot of articles, very useful for us, very shiny appearance. But we also need to ensure proper waste disposal from electroplating industries. That's the basic idea here. That is the completion of this chapter, a rather short chapter. We'll continue our interaction in the next video lecture. If you have liked this discussion, then you can always follow me on my social media handle at the rate Rahul Sai Tutu. You can use this to connect with me. The ID is same on this Telegram channel. I'll be also providing PDFs of uh, PDFs of uh, these uh, discussions. Also, I do host certain questions on this Telegram channel also. If you want to connect with me, you can always message me on IG. I do respond on Saturdays and Sundays. Although Facebook ID is same, but I'm not very active there. Right? Thank you for watching this again. Jai Hind.